How in the world are you going to worship God without music, man? So I asked him, Muhammad, you guys don't have any music? He said, no. Hmm. Hmm. Now, I'm in the piano and organ business. I said, how many mosques are there in the world? He said, millions and millions and millions of them. And I said, none of them have a piano. He said, no. Any of them have an organ? He said, no. Oh, man, I can get rich. Just introduce some music to these guys, put it in there, you know, bound to be... I said, do the Arabs have any music? He said, oh, Arabs have music. I said, hmm, boy, I got it figured out, boy. I can see my next million dollars coming right straight up to at me, you know. So then the priest asked again another time, he want to go back to the masjid again. He went, this is the middle of July, 1991. He went to the masjid with him again. And by the way, this masjid, Sheikh Muhammad Jabali knows it very well, is on Medina Drive in Arlington, Texas. And that's where they were going to, because we were living in Midlothian, just south of Oak Cliff, and south of Dallas. So, they didn't come back. All night we're waiting. What happened? Very late they came back. And when he came in, I looked. There's Muhammad. I recognized him. Who's the guy with him, though? He's wearing a white jalabiyah, white dress like this. He has a white pillbox cap on his head. And I looked at him and I said, Pete, his name was Father Peter Jacobs, but we're not, you know, Catholic, so I don't have to call him Father. I said, Pete, did you become a Muslim? He said, Ashhadu wa la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. I said, Oh my God! Now I used to have cameras like these cameras right here because we had a television show called Estes Music Jamboree. So I got one of our cameras out, opened it up, set it all up on the tripod, and I was going to interview him. And ask him, well, you know, well, you went to Islam, what happened? While I was talking to him, though, he fell asleep. So it was still in my mind, and I was thinking, what am I going to do? This is too amazing. Now here I'm preaching to the people, and I'm trying to change what I'm saying. And here's a priest, just became a Muslim. My father's saying it's a good deal, it sounds all right to him. Now, I don't know what to do. So I decided, I'll talk, make mashura. Huh? I talked to my wife. We have an apartment upstairs. We were in our apartment up there, and I'm telling her, oh, you know, a priest became a Muslim today. What is that? And can you imagine what they were saying about the Quran and saying about this and so and so? All of a sudden, she said, I want to get a divorce. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not the subject, but uh, what happened? She said, no, all this talking about religion and talking about Islam and so I can see it. I said, oh, no, 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 no. No problem here. No, no problem. I said, you thought I, no, no, I was just observing somebody else. No, I'm not interested. Trust me. I don't want to be with those Muslims. Last thing I want to do is be with a Muslim. Ugh. No way. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Just put your mind at ease. She said, I need a divorce. I said, where are we going with this again? What's the problem with that? What happened? She said, a Muslim can't be married to a Christian. I said, what? No, wait a minute. Hold on. I don't look. Look at me. I'm telling you. I swear, I don't want to be a Muslim. Okay? Okay? And even if I did, don't you remember what he said? A Muslim man could be married to a Christian woman. It's not a problem. But I'm not saying I won't do. I'm just saying it's not a problem. She said, that is the problem. A Muslim woman can't be married to a Christian man. I want to be a Muslim, so I need a divorce. I'll never forget, I was sitting right on the edge of the bed, just sitting there, you know, and I almost fell over. I said, at last, I can tell the truth. I can say it. I didn't realize that she liked the idea. I was afraid. I said, okay, the good news is... I, too, want to be a Muslim. You know what she said? I don't believe you. I said, no, no, really. I was just saying that because, you know, but for sure, just so you know, I want to be a Muslim. I've been thinking about it. I want to be a Muslim. We're both going to be Muslim. Alhamdulillah, it's going to be great. Right? You know what she said? I don't believe you because you're either lying right now or you were lying five minutes ago when you said you didn't want to be a Muslim. And either way, I don't want to be married to a liar. So get out. So 
So I started leaving. I'm walking down the stairs of the apartment. I'm down to my father's part. I said, wait a minute. Where am I going to go? This is my father's house. I just got thrown off of my own property. <laughs> what happened here? So I went to get to Mohammed and I woke him up. I said, come, you and me, we got to talk. Come with me. And we went outside the house and we walked those country roads in Middle Othian, Texas until the time for the, dawn, uh, the sun to come up at dawn. And all that time I talked to him about what's it like to be a Muslim? How do you have to believe? What do you have to do? Let me hear all of it now. And no more playing a game. I'm not debating. I just want to know. Just tell me. Just tell me what's Islam. I need to know what I need to do. And he told me everything and I realized this is it. I've got to make a decision. This is a big deal, though. And he told me, okay, this is up to you. You have to go make a choice for yourself. I can't help you. I said, oh, my God. So when he was praying Fajr, I decided, I've been watching this man praying this direction with his head on the ground. It's so beautiful to see a man humble himself, put his head on the ground to the Rabbil Alameen. I said, oh, my God. Let me try that. So I sneaked off somewhere where nobody could see me. Illallah. And then I found a place, a board there, you know, and I bowed down on the ground and I put my head down on the ground on that board there. And I was, and by the way, I'm pretty good at speaking, especially in prayers. I used to make so long a prayer, they wouldn't let me say the prayer at Thanksgiving because the food would be cold. Okay? So, but I put my head on the ground and only these words came, no more words, just this. Oh God, guide me. That's it. And I was thinking, oh, I've got to say more than that. Nothing. Oh, God, if you're there, guide me. That's it. After a while, I sat up and I looked around. There wasn't any fancy rainbow. It wasn't birds flying around. There was no big signs from above. There was no music, angels, harps, nothing like this. It was just a cloudy day in Texas. But inside, I could realize I had to make some changes. To me, that's what I need to do. There's the problem, it's inside of me. Within a few minutes, it became clear what I needed to do, and I had to develop an idea of how to pull this off. I talked to my wife, I talked to my father, I made a bath, and at 10 o'clock that morning, in Middle Othian, Texas, I went in front of this man named Muhammad, and this new man named Yahya, who used to be the priest, and I said, Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. Immediately after that, my wife did her shahada. Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. A few months later, my father did his shahada. Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa ashadu Muhammad Rasulullah. Step by step by step, we saw so many people enter into Islam. We wanted to tell the whole world what is Islam. We wanted everybody to know the real Islam. I said, how could this escape our knowledge? How could we not know?